This map shows the flu is going crazy. Levels are really high in most of the country right now. RSV and COVID are also circulating, setting off a potential triple-demic. This season's triple threat is taking a toll, both on patients and staff. Now that WHO and CDC are worried about a potential surge in cases of strep, and some public health experts say that the culprit could be the flu. Here's why. The flu is a virus, and it can leave you more vulnerable to getting bacterial infections like with Streptococcus bacteria, which causes strep. There are three main reasons for that. First, flu makes it easier for bacteria to infect you. It damages little hair-like structures called cilia that line the respiratory tract. The cilia can't clean out or wash out the lungs like they're used to, and the bacteria can get stuck down there, and then they can replicate and cause more problems. Second, flu infections also cause inflammation. That starts to break apart the tight links between cells in the lining of our lungs, which acts as a protective barrier. That allow bugs to come through, almost like a little bug highway. Third, the flu strains the immune system. So if strep bacteria manage to infect you, the immune system has a harder time fighting them off. Every time there's a flu season, there's going to be a lot more incidence of strep secondary infections. Those can lead to complications like pneumonia, or in very rare cases, the toxic shock syndrome that doctors are seeing in kids. Look at all this red and purple. This flu season is particularly bad. That's partly because of the pandemic. Masking, social distancing, and working remotely protected us against COVID, but those precautions also kept us from getting sick generally. And there isn't a lot of population immunity against many infections. So viruses like RSV and the flu can now get around more easily. The cases of strep are coming at an unusual time of year from what's expected. It's a trend we're seeing with RSV and other infectious diseases since the lockdowns ended. Flu cases are spiking really quickly, and that's what might be leaving us more vulnerable to strep. There's going to be so many more cases of strep causing serious infection. Who is most at risk? Well, that depends on the kind of strep. The number of children who have died from strep A across the UK since September has now risen to 19. And the CDC is also looking at a possible spike in strep A-related complications in kids in the US. Children, particularly smaller children, have all kinds of different strains of strep in their nose and throat every single day that never causes a problem. Their immune system can typically fight them off, but things are more complicated right now thanks to surges in flu and lower level population immunity. Plus, it's possible that strep A could be changing too, to become more invasive. All that together is why we might be seeing a potential increase in serious strep A cases and why it's getting a lot of attention. But it's a different family of strep that typically causes the most problems. It's called Streptococcus pneumoniae. The vast majority of flu seasons, influenza isn't actually the source of death. It's the infection caused by the strep pneumonia and the pneumonia associated with that. Doctors recommend that people 65 and over get a vaccine against strep pneumonia to prevent complications from flu. They say the same is true for people with compromised immune systems, heart disease, or chronic lung conditions. But for most people, strep doesn't cause life-threatening issues. It's really rare to have bad consequences from strep, as opposed to influenza, which kills 35,000 to 70,000 people a year. That's why Peter and David said it was really important to get our flu shots, especially this year. And right now, vaccination rates for flu are pretty low. So how do we prevent all this? It's simple. Wash your hands, wear a mask, and get your flu shot. And if you do end up testing positive for strep, antibiotics work really well. Remember, regardless of what you have, stay home so you don't pass it on. Infections aren't mutually exclusive. Just because you just got over one illness doesn't mean you're immune to others. 